On tonight's show, we have the people, the people or the person behind the forthcoming reality sitcom you may have heard about, Papers. Welcome, S.J. Cooper. Hello, hello, Darren. How are you? Hi, I'm absolutely fine. It's great to have you on the show. It seems like ages since we've been talking about Capers. So we've all been waiting a long time for Capers to drop and we've seen the posters about the island. I know a lot of people are excited about this show. So before you tell us about what is likely to happen, give us a, a bit of background into the show and what they can expect. What can they expect? Um... Hello ladies and gentlemen, first thing I'd like to introduce myself. I am SJ Cooper and I am the creator of Capers reality sitcom created by the people for the people. So if you don't know me already, um, I'm someone trying to build a TV show for our island to make it better. So the background for it starts off with what basically what I just said. The idea was the island, the island gets slated heavily 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 in so many negative lights so for an example i don't know if anyone's seen there was that video that went viral on um tiktok i think it was with some guy that come down and slated it he's, he's not i don't know who he is but apparently he's known doing it to various cities towns villages etc um and that got so much audience and, but stuff like this has happened through the years. I watched through the years of memes about the island and this, that and the other. And I thought, hold on a minute. What if we'd done something that is a positive light, that you can't look in a negative light, you can't look at it in that way because you're only trying to benefit the people of the place where it's at. So what if we'd done something and the actual island got behind that and exposed that, made that go viral? With that viral sensation as it's called now as content on the internet people and areas have, have grown so much through silly things that have happened on the internet so being a filmmaker and going into film um i decided that i wanted to do it about the island for for the people really i did see that interview it was so called um expose the island that that guy did and uh it was, I mean, he was trying to be tongue in cheek, but obviously when you live on the island and you're the subject of his so-called humour, it, it doesn't really drop well. And it, it, there's a lot of lazy journalism about the island and there's a lot of lazy negative talk about the island, I think, from people generally who don't live here, who don't come yeah. here and never set foot on the island quite often, uh, which is a shame. And it's nice to see a show like Capers trying to redress that balance. Papers is, it is a comedy, isn't it? It's a situation comedy. Can you give us a bit of background about the story arc itself and, and who's involved? So Capers is based on three brothers with the same father um, and three different mums. Now, I'm not going to give too much off, like I said to you, Darren, on this interview. The long and short of it, these brothers have reconnected. Uh, they've reconnected again after not even knowing that they had brothers. And where they've reconnected is this beautiful little Isla Sheppey where the middle brother actually lived, has always lived and never left. But with the father's romance, with their mothers, yeah, I can't, I don't want to say too much. Don't give so, too much away, no, no, so no. Yeah. It's in the name, it's in the name Capers, there is always a Capers going on. There's always something happening. And on this island, in reality, there's always these little Capers happening as well. Now, with the story, they're based on real people, some that are no longer with us. But these stories are being enhanced in these real characters. If they yeah. that, some of this stuff happened in real life and has <laughs> happened, and that's another reason I wanted to do it because it's in memory of some of my loved ones. Mm -hmm. uh, you could never tell certain stories if that makes sense. So yeah, I had to box clever, yeah, to make it like this. So it's in a way it's, I've never seen it done in the UK. It's um this whole reality sitcom thing. So obviously we've got reality TV shows like Your Only Way is Essex, all these, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, we say that's reality. It is, it's hyper reality in a way, isn't yeah, it? It's, yeah. It's not, not if we big... saw how they were made, I think, you know, it would open people's eyes. So. hundred, hundred, <laughs> hundred million percent. But it's not, I'm not that I'm slating them or saying anything. No. Very successful, very popular. And it, it's great. But I, what, so what I'm trying to basically do is you're going to be watching a show that has a storyline with a cast, but there will also be people in this cast that are not, that don't know it's real. The way it's shot, 
Um, it's, it's, it's like a gorilla film set. It's just take and go. It's action. Let's do it. It, it only takes someone to... There's a lot of looking into it because it only takes someone to look at the camera or something like that in a scene somewhere. And it's, and it's ruined because we're trying to mm -hmm. give it that cinematic, actual sitcom effect. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So it's, you don't want to take people out of the story because someone's just noticed a camera and then they're suddenly looking into it and maybe waving at it or something yeah. like that. You really want the, this world <clears throat> that you're creating to, to continue as though the cameras weren't there in a way, but you're using the cameras as medium to tell those stories. Yeah, 100%. That sounds a bit poncy, doesn't it? But you know what you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like a show like this can be obviously it is a massive positive boost for the island. So, what are the key challenges though when filming on the island? I mean, I think you've just touched on one there, I, I guess, which is people kind of you know maybe noticing the cameras and looking in. But are there any other key challenges that you've got when setting up and trying to film a sort of guerrilla um, style situation comedy where you? To maybe honest, need yeah. more than one go at it yeah yeah we need any film set especially like anything i direct or put together no matter how good you are or how good it is i will always take minimum three four anyway i've learned that through experience of having to go at things first time and it's horrific in the end of it it becomes a waste of a shoot so there's a lot to think about um to make sure it's right you know what i mean but apart from it's not all gorilla shot because we obviously we've got various locations which are businesses on the island. We've had people that I know that's come forward and helped out with locations, and I've had people that's helped out. There's, there's been people that's helped a hell of a lot because they see they see the vision behind it. They, they saw my vision of what I was trying to do, and they thought, well, why not? Like, they, they kind of, and, and that is it, because no disrespects, the way I, the way I look at certain things in life, if, if you're a creator or anything like that, why not start at home? See, instead of me getting this idea and going, right, I'm going to film this in London or I'm going to film this in Manchester or somewhere like that. And right, let's write it down. Let's do the screenplays. Let's let's sell this to a production company. Let's do that. Yeah. Well, if I put my time into that, then that would be more beneficial to me than the people, wouldn't it? Really? Well, do you know what? But do you know what I think? I think if the island's good enough for Jason Statham and his latest Hollywood blockbuster, I think it's good enough for everybody in, in all honesty. <laughs> There's, it, the island is a character in its own right. It's it's just got so so much richness and depth to it. It has, so. and it's a shame. It's just a lot of the people that are not even quite blind to what, what they got around them. And, they, and that's the honest truth about it. It's like the history side of things. It's in Capers, when once we launch and the episodes start flowing, it's the history we're delivering. Everything that's forgot about, the birth of flight, the, the naval history, like this. I know it's the 21st century and everyone's got their heads in phones and TikTok's taking over the world with irrelevant three second content. But this is your surroundings that you're around. It's nice to know about. And then when you, you start appreciating where you actually are in the world. I went through bad times and stuff like that and I've come out the other end and it was this place helped me because of his surroundings. Do you know what I mean? And, and appreciate it. It's, it's a beautiful place. I'm relatively new to the island. I'm here here three years now, so relatively new. Still new eyes, and it's just like when you go anywhere, you just want to immerse yourself in it. And I, I love the community here. I mean, I wouldn't be doing this radio show if, if I didn't love the community here. And I love the island as well. I mean, we just spent the whole day just sitting, you know, at the sea. Went down to the Neptune for a lace down back. And people you know, pay millions for this. People pay millions of pounds for this. Millions yeah. of pounds live by the ocean. All right, exactly. it's, not, it's not it's not crystal clear and it's not, but it, pity hard. It's, it's, it's still beautiful. And, yeah, yeah, we watched everything. a beautiful sunset in Queenborough and it was lovely. But, yeah, I good. mean, I, you've touched on it already and I, I know we chatted about this when we previously uh, had a talk that you've already planned out a number of episodes. But so will locals and local businesses have a chance to participate in Capers? You, you've already kind of touched on that, that this some is, are helping. This is the actual, there's three massive points to this whole, let's say it's a project because it is, is a TV show, an inspiration for the people. And it is also this cleverly done could market people's businesses. So. Now you are bringing more traffic to not just the island, so everyone's businesses, but directly to your business. The aim is in each episode, we want businesses to come forth and 
say, right, we'd like to be a part of this. How, what, what is it? Give me the, give me the T's and C's. What, what do we do to get a part of this? And it will be the island first refusal. So that's what it's about. So don't get me wrong. I've already had companies from the island approach me and go, this, uh, we could do something really good, really good. Like, uh, don't get me wrong. I've got three wrote in lined up already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's not about them. It's, it's not about them. And they were told that even when I said, I said, listen, once it launches, there's certain things that are already writ for businesses on the island that are relevant to the business. Yeah. Like a joke or the caper or something that happens is relevant already to that business. We're not going to go and offer it to someone in Maidstone, are we? We're going to say, right, the, once we're launching this all out there, there'll be another video on the channel explaining how you can get involved, how you mm -hmm. can if you want to. And the same goes for extras. So the aim is to put the island's businesses on the map, the island's leisure on the map, the island's art, whatever is going on on this island, we want to try and get involved to show every sector. Yeah, that's pretty much what I want to do with the radio show as well, but we're not clashing. And that, and that's, and <laughs> I that's, mean, it's all about support, all, isn't it? Of course it is. And that's why I said to you, mm. that I wanted to, the, 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 the two points that I wanted to deliver the message was the local paper and the local radio. Mm. That's what it's about. It's not about anything else. And we can grow an audience from, you know, from there as well. I mean, yeah. the, the possibilities in terms of audience these days is endless. But if you capture the local audience and they're the people you're talking about and talking with, I think you'll touch the heartstrings of the audience, I'm pretty sure. You know, all everything I've seen that you've done so far just looks so slick as well. And I, I'm, I'm, you know, that's why I'm, I'm dead excited to see the first episode. So I think that's going to be excellent. One of the things you have done is you partnered, you're partnering with Men, um, Mental, can't you, I believe? Yeah, it's, it's not a partnership. It's, um, we haven't confirmed anything because Mental is, I'll give you the story of Mental of what I know. And mm -hmm. it was basically a couple of gentlemen that actually wanted to help, actually wanted to give back and start at the base of the island. Um, I, I knew I knew of these gentlemen anyway, blah, blah, blah. We got talking and I said, well, I want to actually put a mental health charity not just men's but men's mental health is i'm a big believer in it being a mm. sufferer myself so i un completely understand it that was going to be done anyway then obviously men talk started up i thought brilliant lovely in a way um they've kind of saved me setting up a separate thing to do with this as making awareness so why not just traffic all the audience to them mm. in, in a way you know at the minute um, I spoke with them because they've got to actually register it as, because you, it don't take no funds or anything like that, the, the, the charity. As of yet, it's not really a charity. It's just a place to go to help and talk yeah. and a shoulder to cry on and a, someone to pick you up, you know? That, and, and, yeah. and that's a thing to, to put your time away from your family and your work and your normal life to do that for someone's a great thing. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I'm fully behind it and want to make it an actual charity as well, where you can actually get certain different professional works on board to um really help our local people mentally because let me tell you and i'm not saying this out of term there is this this place the reason it is looked at in their negative thoughts is because there is so many people that struggle around here with a mental health and a lot there's a lot of the community around here and because of the area but it's like that through through the whole of the uk and loads of parts of the world i guess Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I think men also are very insular when it comes to mental health and their own mental health. Often they see it as a, as a weakness or yeah. they just don't have the support network of friends sometimes to actually they may have loads of friends, loads of drinking friends and buddies and stuff like that. But men are not the sort of people that can put their arm around his shoulder, their best mate and, and confide. So a, a charity like that is, is, is special, I think, on the island. But uh, And I know women also need the same sort of support as well. Everyone, it's a struggle. Children, children, children yeah. women, everyone, human beings, full stop. You yeah, know? indeed, indeed. So uh, moving forward, how would you define the success of the show? How would you define it uh, personally, the success of the show? Would it just be to be there and have this coming out on a weekly basis or monthly basis or how often you plan it? The success of the show, where would I like it? It's designed, it's well, it's designed to be endless. 
How can how can you measure success if it's endless? Mm. You know, so it's, I mean, it's in a way, the continuation of it is a success by the very nature. Yeah, if if this is, I just want the success of it is if the show runs from and it's got the support from the people. Like I said on that Q and A that I've done on the channel, this show only work and, and what we spoke about before. This channel only works if the people are behind it, and it's. It, like, like I mentioned, it hasn't cost anything. I haven't, this this isn't a business as such or anything like that. It will be a business when the show runs because that's, everything is a business. TV, everything is a business. This was put together by no investment on zero budget, but myself. I, I didn't want, I didn't want to get arts and government grants and go through all that process because I've got the skill set to put all this together myself. I've got the connections. I've got the I've got the connections for the locations. I've got the connections for obviously there's a couple of actors in it. Like I've I've got these connections because of me who I am. So it was it was kind of to challenge myself as well to to do 15 jobs to play mm. these 15 roles of producer, director, writer, actor, um, location, blah blah blah. It, it, it was a challenge. So I done it on the best of a low budget. Now for it to continue. There needs money, some money needs to come in. Now, at the minute, the show doesn't earn nothing on YouTube. It doesn't mm. earn a penny, not not what, not one penny, because the way YouTube works is subscribers and views. And yep. it hasn't got, not being funny, the population of the island is what at the moment, do you know? That, <laughs> some people say 38,000, some people say 40,000. I mean, it could be 41, who knows? <laughs> so, so it's up there in, in the double figures. Well, at the minute, yeah. the subscribers on the show ain't in double figures you know like subscribers so it only takes these people to click this subscribe button watch the video and share it and this show can run forever because it can fund itself now there's a couple of sponsors that want to jump on board to obviously invest in the show um businesses already that want to right can we pay you x amount and you put we want to put our company's name on it but none of this will be confirmed until the show's released and the island gets first refusal, like I said, going back to the, that side of it. All the businesses that want to put their sponsors on it and promote and this, that and the other, it will be offered to them. But yeah. that is what will keep the show running because not saying I need a small violin or anything, but what I have actually risks and not done to put this show together, I have put my life on hold a bit, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. Because I've, got, I've got another two big things that I'm working on at the moment that's on hold. Mm. Because I'm at the point now where this is driving me mad. It's got to come out for the people. Like it's really got. I want to say goodbye to it. I don't want to look at it. I just want it out there. And then <laughs> I'm more than happy to start the cameras rolling and get yeah. the ball rolling again because um, it's going to be a lot quicker. Yeah. So, what is is there anything that people can do on the island? I mean, they need to subscribe for a start, which would be really good. So, is there any quick links for them that they can click onto, or how can they? How can they help you in in the first instance? The thing is, people. A lot of people say this to me. Even people where I've been in the music industry and that, and they go, "You don't ask for no help, do you? You just hope it works." And it's true. I don't. I don't like asking. I don't like asking. I believe that if you like something, then just do a good deed, share it, maybe subscribe to it. And and that's the whole point of doing this. I want people to like it. I don't want people to force to be mm. like, oh, it's, our, it's part of the island, we've got to do it, jump on the bandwagon. No, I want people to believe in the product of what it is and what it can do and enjoy what they're watching. Mm. And, you know, so, and if you do do that, yeah, it needs subscribing to and share it. Share the love, spread it. If you enjoyed it and it made you laugh or you enjoyed something about it, share it to your friends. Yeah. So uh, when, and the, the $64 million question, when can we expect to see the first episode land can we end this interview now or <laughs> <laughs> we're still in it we're still in it <laughs> I'm only, I'm only joking. so all going well as i mentioned in the video we've tied up every problem regarding release we've tied up every problem however um like i did mention it's kind of all on me and my crew at the minute because we added a few bits because we had time we had to wait for things i thought right that could be spiced up me, me, me. And this is all my fault, people. I'll take it on the chin. I'll take it on the chin. <laughs> so I added a few bits to it. However, when adding them few bits, I had a cast problem. Yeah? We had a cast problem 
and I was like, oh, I won't swear because I'm on radio. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. So I kind of had to sit back and wait for that to resolve and work out and think, well, oh, so what am I going to do now, sort of thing. And it was it was horrible. The anxiety was through the roof. I was stressed. But we mm. resolved that. That's done now. To be fair, I sat down and thought to myself, you know what? I'm putting myself under a lot, a lot of pressure here. A hell of a lot of pressure. I'm a, I'm a father and I've still got to try and make money, provide for my family, do this. So I've got to be a bit easier. So I give myself a little bit more time. And that's why I sent that message out on the YouTube. Because I wanted mm-hmm. people to just understand that this ain't a team. At the minute. It is a team when it comes to we're shooting. And don't get me wrong, my cousin William Cooper, he's the co-producer. And people that are helping, obviously Nick Mulder, who's co-producing it with me, they're all helping. But it's, it's a lot. So with how we were looking, I know this is not a long story short, but I'd like to say we are at the end of February. Right. That okay. is my aim. That is my aim uh, to the people, to yourself. That is my aim. However, I'm not going to put myself in a hole doing it. No. You know? No. So that's where Absolutely I'm Absolutely not. But it's not it has far... to be r- right yeah. for you as well as, you know, it's, it's all right, everyone demanding something, but also it has to be right and it has to be right for you as well. Of course it does. And that's what I'm saying, it's free. Like, if, for instance, you go in a shop, you're, I'm not I'm not Amazon, so you haven't paid £7 for me and then you're waiting for a couple of days and your parcel hasn't turned up. <laughs> I am me saying, this is what I'm doing. Wait a minute, everyone. Trust me, hopefully you like it. It's going to be worth the wait. Just stay with me. I promise you, you can see all the behind the scenes. You can see that I'm working on it every day. I'm fully showing everyone that this is this is a lot of work going into this. So just wait for the final product and it's yours. I don't want a pound from you. I don't want one penny. This is free. There's no monthly subscription or weekly subscription. This is from me to you for our island. Let's go. That's what it is. That's what yeah. it is. Well, I'm certainly looking forward to seeing it. Uh, not putting pressure on you. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it, though. I mean, uh, mainly because, I mean, as I say, every clip that I've seen so far is very engaging and it's kind of, it does captivate you and everything resonates. And I think that's what will happen because with the Islanders as well, they will see places they know, they will see people they know as well. Yeah. And I think that that is a magic mixture personally so uh i mean that's why there's probably a lot of anticipation yeah and it's it's wrote and it's designed in a way like only falls and horses so mm. only falls and horses was a show that no matter what age you could watch it and you would find something in it funny mm. so from the age of a four-year-old to a 70 year old if you watch that show it was easy watching yeah it was just it was just cleverly done it was simplicity well so, would love to get you back once yeah, um, yeah, no the first show's either dropping or about to drop, or once it's yeah, dropped. We're probably, and, uh... we're probably... I didn't say what year in the February, did I? <laughs> no, you didn't say what year. So oh, we, we can I'll wait. probably be back on here on 2024. <laughs> 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 no, I'm only messing. Well, we're, we're, we're looking forward to it. Thank you very much for your time today, yes, Jay Cooper. As I say, really looking forward to Capers. I think there's there's been a lot of what's the word for it anticipation building around the island for it we've all seen the posters and i think a lot of people have seen the clip let's rub our hands together when it finally drops and uh, <laughs> enjoy it and i'm sure you i think i think it'll be a in a way it'll be a weight off your mind as well massively massively i can't wait things. to start the journey because this yeah. is this is the foundation you've been pushing the snowball uphill and then you know by the time that first one drops then you start hopefully Hope. pushing it downhill and it's easier That's- that's the plan. <laughs> That's the plan, Darren. Excellent. No, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for your time as well. Um, and also, thanks for your support, mate. And I know I know you've been supporting it and getting behind it and spreading the word yourself. So I'd like to say thank you to you. No worries. No worries. I think mean, that's what the art show should be about. It should be about supporting local artists, local talent and exciting projects. And I think this is a very exciting project for the island. So um, and, you know, we're based in a tourist information centre. And I think what we should probably be doing is having the first episode running on air TV inside there because it's, yeah. it's going to be uh, a flag waver for the island. That's it. Exactly that. Brilliant. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Lovely. Take care.